All right, everybody, welcome back for another one. And today I want to talk about, uh, first and foremost, this prediction that I made in April 30th of 2019, show you how that's playing out now, as well as some price analysis for Bitcoin and XRP of where I think we might be going into next year. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, as you can see, this was an analysis I made April 30th of 2019. Um, so I basically go on to tell you that I thought that Bitcoin at this period of time was going to get rejected from the moving averages and sent back down. Okay. And then it would uh, find support once again around June, July, consolidation, and then it would start finally moving up and get to where we are now. But as we all know, didn't play out that way. Caught a lot of people off guard. Um, Bitcoin had that early quick run up to 14,000 out of its bottom in 2019. So, but anyway, I, I drew this line here to tell you where I thought the best buying opportunity would be before we took off and how I thought that this might play out. I had uh, basically two ideas placed. This bottom line, I thought, hey, maybe we could have a longer bear market, or sorry, bull market, as I thought, taking us all the way into 2023, maybe even 2024. Just kind of drag on longer, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. Uh, or I thought maybe we would get the almost the exact same cyclical four-year pattern. So uh, if you want to check out this analysis, go to TradingView and you can follow me. Um, just see what I had to say completely. But anyway, um, when you play forward, you can see how this played out. So as you can see, it, it's been almost identical following along the lines that I had placed. We're almost exactly where my targets were besides this mistake on the moving averages. So thought we would get rejected, come down, and then take off. Instead, we just went right through and found support right along the curve, basically. So, I mean, Bitcoin is kind of playing out almost exactly as I thought. So I just wanted to show you guys that, you know, and beforehand, this was when I was still barely learning TA. Um, but if, if you don't think TA works, then, you know, how did I do this? Then, right? And this was without me not even having... Just, just having the basic understanding of, you know, what to look for and so on. But anyway, I want to look at the price chart now. So in my last video, I talked about two potential support levels I think we could fall back to. And um, I put these red lines in here for you. So I said I thought we could dip all the way down to this 200 moving average, the blue, um, which took us to 12,000. Or maybe potentially find support about 13.7. So... But I wanted to revisit my last, uh, or that analysis I made in April 30th of last year, because I just stumbled upon it and I was like, wow, that was actually pretty accurate. Um, so, but coming back to what I'm looking at now, um, so in this one, I had thought we would run up to close to 360, 44,000 is what I had. So I thought, okay, let's copy paste historical price action and see where that gets us. And lo and behold, even from this point on, uh, we would run up to 332,000. It's almost right where I was thinking if history just repeats itself from here on, okay? So <clears throat> as you can see here, things are aligning right with what I was thinking. Uh, you know, once again, we're struggling right now to get that all time high. I just don't see it. I think we need more gas. I need we need more buyers. For those of you that aren't are new here, kind of, you gotta understand this market is fueled with emotion um, and euphoria, basically. And right now we've already had all that euphoria. I think we we're running out of those motivated um, guys that are just throwing money at the market. So I think we gotta retrace and get more of them. Okay, that that's how these markets work. We run out of those that herd okay now we got to go lower and bring in another herd and so on and and that's basically what happens so we'll see um i wouldn't obviously i don't care if bitcoin breaks twenty thousand and takes off running it's going to bring up the entire market with it but i just you know i want to show people like look it's there's still potential for a pullback here so keep your eyes peeled all right next i wanted to get into where i think the price is going for XRP compared to Bitcoin and why historically. So first and foremost, for those of you that don't know, 
in 2017, XRP almost flipped Bitcoin. It got so close. The market caps were really close. It just depends which exchange you're on. But for some reason on coin market cap, uh, they decided to go ahead and take out the feeds, the price feeds from South Korea because XRP was selling at such a premium over there that it was pushing it up the market cap. So obviously us in the XRP community speculate that they did that on purpose because nobody wanted to see XRP flip Bitcoin. But it got really close and that's because the demand was so strong in South Korea for all of crypto and it was causing XRP specifically to trade at much of a premium. So, but anyway, it got extremely close. The markets, market caps were almost side by side. And so I wanted to say historically, if we can get close to that again, what would those numbers look like? And going back to Bitcoin, I'm going to tell you again, my price target in this cycle, minimum 100,000. So I, I don't care what anyone says. I believe Bitcoin can easily hit 100,000. And I do not believe 332 uh, is, is out of all possibility either. I mean, you had an analysis at an uh, analyst at Citibank even say so themselves that 310,000 was where their price targets were for next year. So this kind of all aligns with right what I'm showing you. And um, so I said, okay, so if XRP can um, get somewhere in that area, what would that look like? Okay, so let's say Bitcoin gets to, so I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm counting at circulating supply of 19 million and a price target of 100,000, which would put us at a $1.9 trillion market cap. So if you take that market cap and you divide it by uh, 50 billion in circulating supply of XRP, that would get you to a price target of $38. And that's if, obviously, if XRP is getting close to flipping Bitcoin once again, which I believe it can. If you don't, that's fine. You know, do what you do, but I'm just giving you my opinion. All right. So also, same thing. If XRP can get close to flipping Bitcoin at a $332,000 price target, putting us at 6.3 trillion market cap. Take that market cap, divide it by 50 billion, and that would get you a price target of 126 for XRP. So I'm just showing you what I think is a possibility. So I will tell you right now, I would not be surprised at all to see XRP get anywhere in the range between $38 and $126. I think those are all realistic price targets. We are moving into a new financial infrastructure it's going to involve crypto, and that's why we get these astronomical numbers, okay? No doubt in my mind, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and probably XRP all cross a trillion dollars in market cap. We'll just have to see who gets there first, you know, where they're at in any certain order, but I think they're all going to continue to compete up in that uh, trillion dollar range, all right? And as we're moving into one of these or all of them becoming a form of global reserve asset in some form, you're going to see one of them, right? At least get it to multi-trillion dollar market caps. I mean, right now gold is at like 9 trillion, I believe in market cap, something like that. And that is being, uh, with the price being suppressed in my opinion. So uh, none of this stuff is completely unrealistic. I mean, like I said before, you got Citibank analysts calling for similar ranges. So there you go. That's where I think my range is at. Uh, XRP between 38 and 26 is all realistic. And, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. All right. It's going to be a very interesting next few years. I will definitely say that. On the back end of this, though, I wanted to give you one alternative scenario. So one thing not many people talk about much is um, the logarithmic curve, uh, basically demonstrating exponential growth over time flowing down. So if you go through the bit, uh, Bitcoin chart, so this is BLX, which is Brave New Coin Liquid Index on TradingView. And you run the logarithmic curve. Um, you can see real, realistically in Bitcoin cycle, each time it has gotten longer and longer. So first one was 51 weeks. Second one, grab the wrong tool there. The second one gets you there you go, 129 weeks. Third one, 211 weeks. So see the progression there? 
So I wouldn't be surprised if the fourth one gets you somewhere more in like 300 weeks area time frame. So 362 weeks if you, so I just overlay the exact chart pattern again, running us out more for a into 20, 25 or sorry 2024 area for that and kind of as i showed you on this first one here this green line how it could potentially be an extended cycle so who knows each time the market cycle has lasted a little longer that's one thing that people just don't seem to emphasize but i i totally agree everyone will say but what about the having so the having occurs in, uh, in 2024 again so you know, we might just see another straight up four-year cycle, go back down, find a bottom, and do it all again. Who knows? Just wanted to show you and take this logarithmic curve. Um, this cycle could end up lasting longer than people expect. All right. All right. That about wraps it up. I hope that was an interesting one for you again. As always, please like and subscribe, share with your friends and family, and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks. What is a cashless society? What does it actually mean in a literal or high level sense? Money will become like these, relics of a different age. And will only be found in places like this. In other words, hard cash will disappear. It will become electronic, transferred by things like these. Then Tracy is in Beijing to show us what a nearly cashless society actually looks like. Then, good morning. Mobile payment transactions in China reached a cumulative total of 277.4 trillion RMB in 2018, ranking number one in the world, according to the recently released statistical report on internet development in China. As of June 2019, online payment users in the country reached 633 million. The cashless society is now approaching. When's the last time you paid with cash? Well, chances are cash has taken a backseat to the plastic in your wallet and smartphone pay apps. Denver 7's Ryan Luby explains the digital pay revolution and why not everyone is on board. The cashless society, the cashless society, the cashless society, the cashless society is now approaching. The cashless society.